In this lecture, we will discuss another very important writer belonging to the modern age. And the name of that writer is G.B. Shaw. So he was born in 1856 and he died in 1950. So that's the lifespan of G.B. Shaw. First of all, we will discuss some important facts about G.B. Shaw's life and his style of writing. And then we will talk about the various plays written by him one by one. So the full name of G.B. Shaw is George Bernard Shaw. And his pen name is Kono D. Baseto. Pen name means under which a writer writes a book. Now that is called pen, pen name. Another name of uh, pen name is pseudonym. So his pen name and his pseudonym is Kono D. Baseti. He published many plays under this name also. He was born in Dublin, means he is an Irish writer. Dublin, you know, the capital of Ireland. So like W.B. Yeats, uh, like Jonathan Swift, like James Joyce. So all these writers, he, he, he is an Irish writer. So he is an Irish dramatist. He was born in Ireland. And he had an excellent skill of delivering speeches. So he was a great orator, you must remember. Another very important fact about G.B. Show. And he was an atheist. Atheist, I think you know, one doesn't believe in the existence of God. That person is called atheist. So he was an atheist like T.B. Shelley. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925. And he also won Oscar Award in 1938. He was a Fabian dramatist. He belonged to a group of dramatists known as Fabian dramatists. Now, who is a Fabian dramatist? So, a Fabian dramatist is one who wants to bring reforms in the society to peaceful ways that a, a dramatist is called a Fabian dramatist. For example, J.B. Show, he uh, talked about many contemporary issues through his plays and thus he tried to bring some reforms in the society. So, a Fabian dramatist is one who wants to bring social reforms in the society. Uh, by presenting the problems of the society in the place means uh, by presenting the problems in a in a peaceful way so that's why he is called a fabian dramatist and he joined the fabian society in 1884 gb show like uh, uh, like charles dickens uh, like thomas carlyle like joe Eliot, she uh, he believed in art for life's sake what is the meaning of art for life's sake it means a work of art should deal with the problems of the society that's why through his plays he talks about the various problems of the society that is called art for life's life's sake uh jb show he made one statement one day uh, once he said for art's sake alone i would not face the toil of uh, writing a single sentence what is the meaning of art sake actually there are two slogans one is art for life's sake second is art for art's sake what is the meaning of art for art's sake means a writer should not talk about the problems of the society through his works rather a writer should write works for beauty for enjoyment that is called art for art's sake and what is the meaning of art for life's sake it means a writer should talk about the problems of the society through his works and thus he should try to bring some social reforms in the society. And that's why G.B. Show was against art for art's sake. He believed in art for life's sake. And that's why he made a statement that he would not uh, face the toil. Toil means hard work. Means G.B. Show, he said that he will not write even a single sentence for beauty and for enjoyment means he wants to say that he will present the problems of the society through his works and that's why jb show he made another statement i write plays with the deliberate purpose to convert the nation into to my opinion opinion means view actually jb show you know he writes a particular type of drama and that type of drama is called drama of ideas, which he learned from his master, Henrik Ibsen. And Henrik Ibsen, he belonged to Norway. So in his drama of ideas, G.B. Show, he always presents a different uh, uh, view 
he presents a different opinion uh, to the society for example in his play arms and the men he says that all the soldiers are forward and the soldiers they join army not for the sake of patriotism but in order to get job similarly in the same play arms and the men he proves that all lovers are false lover so he always presents ideas which are quite opposite to the society and thus he wanted to convert the society and that's why he says that i write plays with a deliberate purpose to convert the nation to my opinion and that's why he started a new type of drama which is called drama of ideas in this type of drama ideas are more important characters are not important the dramatist main aim is to present his ideas and that's why gb show he presented his new ideas um very radical ideas through his plays he was highly influenced by the norwegian dramatist henrik ibsen and he learned the drama of ideas from henrik ibsen henrik ibsen you know is one of the very famous uh, writers and dramatist he is quite famous henrik ibsen is quite famous for his one book uh, whose name is a doll's house a feminist book gb show he also wrote a play a book on ibsen plays and the name of that book is the quint essence of uh, ibsenism now gb show had a philosophy he believed in life force now what is life force life force means uh, the power to do better according to gb show life force starts when a child takes birth and it continues till a person dies so life force continues from birth to death what is the meaning of life force life force means force which compels us which uh, forces us to succeed in life and that 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 force compels us to do something for example when a child uh, takes birth first of all um, he he the child learns to speak then when the child learns to uh, crawl and then to uh, walk then to uh, then to run means he the child by and by learns each and everything and that's uh, that's in our real life that every day we do something in order to uh, do uh, in order to make our uh, tomorrow uh, brighter or 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 excellent that is called life force now another important characteristics of gb show's plays is that that his plays that his plays have prologues and epilogues prologues means introduction epilogues means conclusion so his plays contains pr prologues and epilogues now actually gb show he was not satisfied with the english he found many problems with english and that's why he gave he donated a large sum of money for creating and promoting a new alphabet of english so he donated a large some amount of money in order to uh, in order to bring some reforms in english language overall he has written 62 plays and five novels and gb show later on uh, when there came instability in the world then gb show he he spotted some dictators like mussolini and stalin now you must remember uh, some plays written by gb show uh, these plays have connection with william shakespeare so these plays are the dark lady of the sonnets cymbeline brief finished shakespeare's show you must remember these three plays which have shakespearean themes now gb show's first play which was converted into a movie the name of that play had been how he lied to her husband now gb shows one novella novella do you know a, a, a work of literature uh, longer than a short story but a shorter than a novel is called a novella so he, so his one novella uh, was banned in ireland and the name of that novella is the adventures of the black girl in in her search for gold why this uh, play was why this novel was banned why because this novel has anti christian theme ac ward was one of the important writers belonging to the modern period he uh, 
praised GB show and he said show has been for modern Britain what Socrates Socrates was for ancient Greeks so he compares GB show to the Greek writer Socrates as Socrates Socrates he had been an excellent writer in uh, Greece similarly GB show is an excellent writer in England now we will talk about uh, his place first of all we will talk about GB show's masterpieces and though I will talk about all the important points in this lecture but uh, I would recommend you to go through these five plays in detail I will talk about the main plot and the important incident of these five plays these five plays are GB show's masterpiece but I would recommend you to go through these plays in detail the one excellent play written by GB show is arms and the man subtitle of this play is an anti-romantic comedy why because through this play GB show he demolishes the two myths relating to love and love and and military life he proves that all the lovers are false lover he also proves that all the soldiers are forward and they join army not because of patriotism but for money it was published in 1894 you must remember the year of publication of this play this play is divided into three acts and the title of this play arms and the man has been taken from john dryden's translation of Virgil Anid. Virgil, I think you know, uh, Virgil had been a Roman writer who has written a wonderful epic. The name of that epic is Anid. And do you know John uh, Milton's Paradise Lost is also based in, uh, is also based on Virgil's Anid. So when John Dryden, he translated Virgil's Anid into English. So the title of this play has been taken from that uh, translation. Through this play, GB show, he attacks on war and heroism uh, that I have already uh, conveyed you that he proves that all the lovers are forwards and all the, uh, all the soldiers are forwards and all the lovers are false. There's one very important phrase in this play and the name of that play is chocolate cream soldier. I will clear this phrase later on. When on the next slide, I will talk about the important characters and the plot line of this play in brief. Actually, when this play starts, a war is going on and the war is going on between two countries, Bulgaria and Serbia. Now I will talk about the important characters and then we will talk about the plot line of this play. So the hero of this play is Blanchley. Heroine is Reina Patkov. Major Patkov is Reina's father. Catherine Patkov is Reina's mother. Sergius is Reina's fiance. Nicola is Reina's servant. Luca is Reina's maid. So these are the important characters. Now I would uh, like to talk about the plot of this play in, in brief. Actually, when this uh, play starts, so a war was going on between Bulgaria and Serbia. So Blanchley is taking part in the war. So Blanchley's army is defeated and that's why Blanchley's soldiers, they run away. Normally it is thought that the soldiers, they don't run away, but Blanchley's soldiers, they run away. And even Blanchley also runs away. And Blanchley, secretly, he enters Reina Patkov's room. Uh, it's night time and Reina is in her night gown. And then there's a talk between Reina Patkov and Blanchley and Blanchley demolishes Reina Patkov's romantic views about love and war because Reina Patkov she thinks that soldiers are really very brave they don't feel thirsty uh, they don't feel tired but Blanchley when he enters there and when he has a conversation with Reina Patkov so Blanchley he demands chocolate he tells Reina Patkov that he is very hungry and then this phrase chocolate cream soldier is very important. Then Reina is surprised that the soldiers also feel uh, hungry. So in this way, Blanchley, he also tells uh, Reina that soldiers, they join army, not because of patriotism, but because of, uh, uh, because of money, because they are jobless. And he also tells uh, uh, Reina 
that wars are won not by bravery but by cleverness so in this way he demolishes rena patkov's all romantic views about war and rena patkov she falls in love with blanchley and then she helps blanchley to run away from her city and later on when the when the war is over when there is a treaty blanchley comes to return rena's uh, court because rena she provided her father's court to blanchley in order to uh, help her help him run away so when uh, the war is over the treaty is done blanchley comes to uh, rena patkov in order to return the court but do you know that rena patkov is already engaged because uh, because major patkov is rena's sorry uh, sergius is rena's uh, fiance but sergius is not faithful to rena because when Ser when rena is absent sergius he, he starts making love to luca who is rena's mate and later on later on their love affair between mean between means uh, between uh, rena patkov and uh, luca comes to the fore and what happens that uh, at last what happens that uh, that uh, rena patkov she declares uh, her love for blanchley and somehow they agree and the play ends very happily with the proposed marriage of blanchley and rena patkov and sergius and luca i haven't discussed the plot of this play in detail you can read the plot of this play, this play in detail yourself so i have talked about uh, is for example nicola uh, nicola is uh, luca's uh, uh, fiance but nicola is more interested in money than in luca and when he comes to know that luca uh, is having a love affair with sergius so he gets ready to leave luca because nicola he wants to open a shop so he thinks that luca will become his customer uh, rather than uh, rather than his wife you must read this play attack on a war and heroism and and love also next play is man and superman as the title indicate this play was published in 1902 this play is divided into four acts and gb show he took the idea of this play from a very great philosopher nietzsche and through this play gb show he talks about his philosophy of life force Beside a life course, G. B. Show, he also talks about one more topic, and that is the the search for an ideal husband or search for an ideal wife. So that is the major theme of this play, that a woman's search for an ideal husband. And there is a very important phrase, and the name of that phrase is "Dawn John in Hell," and this phrase occurs in Act Third. And the central character of this play is John Tanner. now john tanner in this play is writing a book and the name of that book is the revolutionist handbook and pocket companion next play written by gb show is pigmalion pigmalion actually there is a very interesting story relating to uh, pigmalion that uh, pigmalion was a person uh, who fell in love with this statue so his love for that statue was so true that that statue got converted into a beautiful woman so that's why uh, the title pigmalion has been taken because uh, because subtitle of this play is a romance romance means imagination it was published in 1912 and it is a mythological play it is based on a myth myth i have cleared you it is based on the myth of pigmalion who fell in love with the statue and his love for that statue was so true that that statue was converted into a beautiful woman and uh, that's why uh, through this play gb show he talks about uh, the mythical story of uh, pigmalion who had been the king of uh, cyprus and the theme of this play is phonetics and pronunciation you must remember this play is about pronunciation because the central character of this play is a professor whose name is professor hidgens one day he has a pact with his friend and what is the bet he he claims that he can convert any girl uh, into a high class girl means he can teach correct uh, 
phonetics and pronunciation to any to anyone and that's why he selects one a poor girl and the name of that poor girl is Aliza Doolittle who sells flowers and he converts that girl into a high class uh, girls and that's why this play talks about uh, personality transformation of a girl so he totally changes the personality of a poor girl that's why the, the title is pygmalion so as pygmalion's true love converted a statue into a beautiful woman similarly uh, his efforts converted uh, a, a lady belonging to the low class into high class uh, society later on this play was converted into a movie and the name of that movie is my fair lady next play is saint john which is a religious play and uh, it was published in 1923 it is a historical play and michael holfreud uh, is one of the important writers he calls this play a tragedy without villain and shows only tragedy it is a tragedy as the title indicates a so saint john it talks about uh, john of arc's life and her death and later on john of arc was declared a saint that's why the title of this play is saint john there are total six scenes in this play and the setting of this play is a hundred years war hundred years war do you know these wars were fought between france and england and these wars started in 1338 and continued till 1453 so from 3038 to 1453 this period is known as hundred years war which were fought between england and france now uh, what's uh, what's the theme of this play the theme of this play is religion and faith actually actually when this play started france france had been a colony of britain means france was under uh, britain then uh, there is a girl uh, who is uh, who belongs to a farmer family whose name is john of arc she had visions visions means angels fairies they she he, she used to have uh, visions of angels and fairies and they directed john of arc to free france from england and that's why uh, she joins the army there's a very long story you can read yourself she joins the army uh, first of all uh, people they don't want to uh, include uh, john of arc into the army they don't want to give weapons to john of arc but john of arc is a miraculous girl and she performs many miracles in this play you can read those miracles yourself at last she is allowed to lead the army and she defeats the britishers but people especially men they start feeling jealous of uh, john of arc and later on john of arc is arrested on the charge of witchcraft she is tried and she is burnt alive and do you know again one miracle takes place uh, her complete body burns away but her heart refuses to burn it still keeps on throbbing and at last her throw her heart is thrown into the ocean so that's why this play is called a tragedy without villains or shows only tragedy so through this play gp show he talks about the murder and the canonization means to declare somebody a saint so gp show he talks about the murder and canonization of saint john so saint john was burned alive in 1431 in scene six and this scene is known as the trial scene as we have the trial scene in william shakespeare's plays the merchant of venice also john was uh, acquitted of heresy heresy means witchcraft she was freed of witchcraft in 1456 and in 1920 she was declared a saint and that's why nowadays she is known as saint john there's a very important court and that code is really excellent actually in this world uh, there's no value for true saints because people they don't uh, accept the true saints and they, they murder or they kill the true saints so that's where there's a wonderful uh, quotation she says oh god 
that made this beautiful earth, when will it be ready to accept thy saint? How long, O oh Lord, how long? So she raises a question that when will this world or when will the people of this world accept the true saint? They will accept the value of a true saint. Another wonderful play, the fifth most important play. So you must uh, read these five most important plays. Arms and the Man, Man and Superman, Pygmalion, St. John and the Apple Cart. Now, subtitle of this play is a political extravaganza. And this through this play, J.B. Show, he attacks on all types of government. He attacks democracy, he attacks aristocracy, he attacks plutocracy. He also attacks bureaucracy. Plutocracy means government by the rich people. Aristocracy means government by the aristocrats. Democracy, you know that uh, government by the people. Bureaucracy means government by the officers. So he attacks all types of uh, government through this play, the apple cart. There are two important characters. One is Magnus, who is the king of England. Another important character is Proteus, who is the prime minister of England. Actually, Proteus, the prime minister of England, he wants to reduce the king's power. Earlier, king had veto power. So he wants to end the king's veto power. He wants to weaken the king. And that's why he uh, he 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 uh, pressurizes Magnus to give up his kingdom. Magnus, who is very popular among the people, and that's why Magnus is very clever, and he gets ready to resign or to 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 leave his kingdom. But he puts one condition to Proteus. He tells Proteus that if he leaves the kingdom. So he will fight for the election of the prime minister. And now Proteus knows that if the king, he fights for the prime minister's election, so definitely the king will win. And that's why Proteus at last, he stops. He doesn't demand uh, that Magnus, he should leave his kingdom or he should leave his uh, veto power. Plutocracy means government by the rich people. Now we will talk about several other plays of GB show. We will also we will only talk about the theme because now the theme of other plays is important. One is Mr. Widower's House, which is GB show's first play. And through this first play, GB show, he talks about slum landlordism, means the people who live in the slums. Next is Mrs. Warren's profession. Through this play, he talks about prostitutions. And this play was banned in England. Next is philanderer. Philanderer, do you know? From the word philanderer means a person who moves on from, from one place to another. And uh, it has another name also. So through this play, he talks about two concepts, sex and marriage. And this play has two endings like, uh, uh, like, G like Charles Dickens' Great Expectation. As Charles Dickens' Great Expectation has two endings. Similarly, this play has two endings. Next is Mesa Barbara. Through this play, he talks about education. Next play is Candida. And through this play, GP Show, he talks about marriage and female equality. Next play is Back to Methuselah. And through this uh, play, GP Show, he talks about his life force. And in this play, GP Show, he attacks Darwinism. Darwinism, I think you know, Charles Darwin. Was quite famous for his book, Origin of Species, which was published in 1859, a scientific book. So G.B. Show, he attacks Darwinism, Darwinism, theory of natural selection, fittest of the survival. Next is the doctor's dilemma. Dilemma, do you know, conflict? Through this play, G.B. Show, he talks about the problem of a limited medicine. And uh, the doctor in this play is working on TB. So due to a uh, shortage of uh, medicine, the doctor faces a dilemma uh, to which person to administrate uh, this uh, medicine. So he finds himself in a, in a conflict. Next is John Bull's Other Island. Through this uh, play, GP show, he talks about the problem of Ireland. Next play is Miss Alliance. And through this uh, play, GP show, he talks about 
man woman relationship and parent child relationship next play is getting married as the title indicates through this play he talks about marriage next play is the devil's disciple and through this play gb show uh, he talks about imperialism actually this play is set in america in 1770s and through this play he attacks imperialism imperialism i think you know a philosophy in which a country tries to extend the boundary of its country by making other countries a slave by making the people of other countries slave as india had been a colony of britain for nearly 300 years so that is called imperialism so he attacks imperialism through this play the devil's disciple and through this play he talks about the hanging of a rebel rebel do you know protester uh, during the american war of independence next is caesar and cleopatra now you must not get confused with a play written by william shakespeare and the name of that play is antony and cleopatra but the name of this play is caesar and cleopatra so this play is written by gp show and antony and cleopatra is has been written by william shakespeare this play is sent it set in ancient egypt and through this play also he attacks imperialism and he talks about he also talks about the relationship between caesar and cleopatra cleopatra you know he she had been the queen of egypt and she falls in uh, love with antony and through this play he also attacks hero worship next play is captain brass bounds confession this play is set in morocco in 1890s and through this play also he talks about uh, imperialism next play is man of destiny and through this uh, play tb show he presents a sterical portrait of a young napoleon next is androcles and the lion and through this play tb show he talks about religious punishment he talks about religious persecution means religious punishment do you remember uh, one writer whose name is graham green he has also written a play with the same theme and the name of that play is the power and the glory next is you never can tell that is the most unsuccessful play of gp show and through this play gp show he talks about generation gap in terms of uh, social relations and matting next play is heartbreak house house the subtitle of this play is a fantasia means imagination a fantasia in the russian manner on english themes this play is set during the world war one and this play was highly influenced by william shakespeare's play king lear and chekhov's russian writers play the cherry orchard through this play gb show he talks about a cultured lazered europe before the war started so he talks about a cultured europe lazered europe free europe before the first world war started next play is too true to be good subtitle of this play is a political extravaganza like the apple cart and through this play gp show he talks about social mores mores means social rules he talks about next is on the rock subtitle of this play is a political comedy and this comedy was set against the great depression do you know great depression took place in 1929 so this play is set in 1929 and through this play he sports a dictatorship why in order to in, over, in order to end the economic crisis next is millennials through this play uh, gram green he talks about uh, the social life or the commercial life of a successful businessman simpleton next play is the Sim simpleton of the unexpected isle again the subtitle of this play is a vision of judgment and the original title of this uh, uh, play had been the end of the simpleton through this play he talks about polygamy polygamy do you know having more than one wife is called uh, polygamy next play is geneva through this play gb show he talks about uh, uh, the failure of the league of nations in order to stop the war and that's why he sports dictatorship that there must be dictatorship in the world 
so that these wars can be ended. So he sports dictatorship. Next phrase in good King Charles golden days. So the subtitle of this play is a true history that never happened. Through this play also she talks about uh, dictatorship. Next play is buoyant billions. Subtitle of this play is a comedy of no manners. This is the last complete TV show. And through this play, TV show, he talks about the marriage of a billionaire's daughter. Next, actually, GP show has divided his plays into two categories, pleasant plays and unpleasant play. So under the category pleasant, unpleasant play, there are Mrs. Warren's professions, Mr. Vitover's house. They are called unpleasant plays, the philanderer and Puritan plays. This is the third category, which talks about Puritan religion. So these plays were published in 1901. And through these plays, G.B. Show, he talks about imperialism and empire. Next play is The Devil's Disciple, in under the category of uh, unpleasant play, plays. Next is Caesar, Caesar and uh, Cleopatra. Next is Captain Brass Bounds Confession. So these three plays, The Devil's Disciple, Caesar and Cleopatra, Captain in Captain Brass Bounds Confession, they all are Puritan plays. Now, pleasant plays in which he talks about the happy aspects of life. So these uh, pleasant plays are uh, Arms and the Man, Candida, The Man of Destiny, you can you never can tell. And these all plays they were published together in 1898. Now we will talk about some of the important novels written by J.P. Show. So the important novels written by J.P. Show are Immaturity, The Irrational Knot, Love Among the Artists, Casual Byron's Profession, and An Unsocial Socialist. These are some uh, novels written by J.P. Show. That's all about J.P. Show. So I hope that uh, you will be able to understand this uh, lecture. You need to learn five works in detail. The first five.